of the 18-yard line. So Chris White on the kickoff return for the Rebels, Chase Bostic on that special team tackle. And first down for an Edward Dade also on that on that hit. So first down, LaGrange to their own 18-yard line. Luke Sanders, number 38, was one of the first men down there, but he was not quite able to make the stop. And again, inside the 20-yard line, that's what Coach Arledge likes to see. Couple of receivers go left. In fact, three do as they send a wing out there. Trips to the left side. One running back will be the fullback Butler behind Hathaway. And he's going to give him the football and not much inside as the fullback Butler is going to be stopped maybe a yard to the 19 yard line. But that will be about all as he drew a crowd of West Monroe Rebels defensively, led by the defensive end Ricky Gio and middle linebacker Lucas Jackson, who came into the game with 52 tackles in the first five contests. So at the 19-yard line, second down, about nine yards to go. And Frank Chris White is shaking up a little bit on the play. He's at about the 15 or 16-yard line, and he's being helped off the field. And that would be a big loss if they lose him. He's their senior running back, and he's a good one. He is. He came into the game with 364 yards rushing in those first five games. He's going to be replaced by Julius Creighton, who is a defensive end. Uh, pardon me, a defensive back. Plays in the secondary. And he'll line up at tailback. Fullback is going to be Butler. Hathaway has receivers to each side. Second down about nine. And they're stopping play once again. And again, flags are all over the field. Well, Frank, once again, the defensive line of West Monroe shifted right before the snap of the ball. And that caused one of the Gator offensive linemen to jump offside. Of course, the defense can do that. So they'll step off five yards against LeGrange. Move the ball back to inside the 15, very near the 14-yard line. The Gators will have it there with second down and 14 yards to go. 3-11 remaining in the first period as West Monroe leads Lagrange 9 to nothing. And what you try to do when you shift and move your players like that, uh, when, you, when the offensive line gets up to the football, they look and they see who they're going to block. And then all of a sudden, as the defense is shifting, they, they lose who they're going to block, and it's, it causes that confusion. Now yeah, they sent two receivers to each side, and the quarterback fakes Hathaway out rolling right. He's in big trouble and going down. Hit hard and dropped. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, which was the 14. Clinton Trail Ware had him in the sights, and also Case Sanders combines on the tackle. So nothing that time for Hathaway. He had only uh, one running back, and he faked to him and was kind of bootlegging to the right side. He was all by his lonesome, and he was in big trouble. Frank, I, I'm not sure. I think he wanted to give to the, the running back that was behind him, but the running back went the other way. Either the quarterback went the wrong way or the running back did. Somebody did because he wanted to hand that football off. In that case, he was even, in even bigger trouble. <laughs> Third down, about 14 yards to go for the Gators, and this time Jacob Hathaway drops back in a shotgun formation. Has the direct snap, looks to throw, steps up, he's sacked, he's down, back around the 10-yard line. The sack crew gets to Jacob Hathaway and knock him down to the 10. Mims Boyce is there, registering that sack for West Monroe with help from his friend J.R. Hayden. And it's fourth down, and again, Jim, LaGrange is going to have to punt it away. And again, Jacob Hathaway, when he receives the snap, is going to be in the end zone to kick it out of there. And the last time he was near the end zone trying to punt, uh, he missed the snap. He didn't see it. It uh, resulted in his safety. But nine men that time rushing the passer as only two guys went out to catch the, uh, the intended pass, and they were single covered. West Monroe may be coming, trying for the block. Ten men up on the line of scrimmage. There's the snap. Big rush. Gets the kick away, though. J.J. Johnson under it at the LaGrange 40, and he is hit there. So he's hit twice. Yeah, he was hit twice. He may have been trying to call a fair catch, but he didn't really get that done. He's down at the 40-yard line of the Gators as Dwight Butler got down there to make the hit, the first hit. And J.J.'s down at the 40-yard line. Did a good job holding on to the football. He really did. I think he wanted to call a fair catch, but he just didn't get his hand up in time. And I think he was a little indecisive about that. But the second hit came when J.J. was flat on the ground. He was clearly down. And the second guy just pounced on him. But no flag is down. And the Rebels have it at the LaGrange 40-yard line. First and 10, leading 9-0. And now as play is about to resume, a timeout has been called. Oh, that timeout by West Monroe. Obviously, they're in the wrong set. And we'll pause and return. The Rebels 9-0. This is West Monroe football. Here we go. Rebels first down to the 40. Tucker back to throw. He fires. Has Turner. The 20, the 15. He is down to the 14-yard line. Radio Audits came back to play a little bit early, and Mitch Tucker has hit Michael Turner with a pass over the middle, and Turner's down to the 14-yard line of the Gators where Chris White made the tackle. Nice pass of Tucker, nice little catch and run, Jim, by Michael Turner after he caught the ball to get it to the LaGrange, 14. That's a 27-yard play. 
Good patience by Tucker. The play wasn't open. Tucker, Turner wasn't open early. He waited uh, long enough until he broke free and hit him with a strike. First down from the 14. Here's uh, Tucker to throw and has J.J. to the 10. He is down at the 7. Upended is J.J. Johnson at the 7-yard line. Julius Levy made the tackle as Tucker threw it into the flat, actually threw that thing laterally uh, into the hands of J.J. Johnson. J.J. had a good move on, got it inside the 10, then was really hit in the air. We'll call it the 8-yard line. The gain is about 6. It'll be second and 4. Good job by J.J. to pick up about 6 yards. He had a little blocking that time. Barfield wide right to the left side goes McVay. I backfield this time with Mark Banks at fullback and J.J. at tailback and he gets the handoff and J.J. cuts against the grain and goes down for an old gain of the eight-yard line. Met nicely by Stephen McArthur and Chad Hardy, the linebacker for LaGrange. Not much, if anything, on the play at the eight-yard line. Third down, four yards to go for West Monroe. Tell you what, these Gators are hard to run against. They really are hard to run against. West Monroe picking up some yardage, but every once in a while it's tough to come by as that ends the first quarter. First quarter has come to an end and we'll be back. It's West Monroe 9, LaGrange nothing. You're listening to West Monroe football. At Rebel Stadium, beginning the second quarter, I'm Frank Hoffman with Jim Norris and Bill Norris. And as we start the second quarter, the Rebels have the ball to the eight yard line of LaGrange with third down, about four yards to go. Nine to nothing our scores. The Rebels operate here with two tight ends and one wide out to the right side. Quarterback Mitch Tucker takes the ball and gives to Banks, Banks. behind blocking at the five. Banks down to the one. He is in for the touchdown. Mark Banks for West Monroe. Nice run, Jim, by Banks behind. Good blocking again of that offensive line, and the Rebels scored to add six more. And Banks took a couple of shots before he made his way into the end zone. Just great running by Mark Banks. Let's send it to the sideline. Here's Bill. Guys, you talked about the Gators, uh, how stingy they are, giving up yardage on the ground, and they have done that in this first quarter of play and as we open the second quarter. But I think that we opened it up by opening it up and uh, throwing a couple, those couple of passes uh, that we did on this first drive or the, on this drive here made that run a little bit easier, although Mark Banks did a magnificent job running and scoring that touchdown. Lee Deal's extra point is up and good. So the Rebels add to their lead. We'll be back with a score. West Monroe 16. LaGrange nothing. Four seconds into the second period. You're listening to West Monroe football. Hello. Position for starting both drives, both of them uh, in LaGrange territory. And they've driven 47 yards both times for the touchdowns plus the safety to make it 16 nothing. And really the Gator defense, Frank, not playing that bad, but their backs have been against the wall because the offense for the Gators has yet to pick up a first down. So they've been on the field for the entire first half. Lee Deal with a kickoff of the West Monroe Rebels. White brings it in to the eight yard line, returns to the 10, 15, 20, 25, a crack to the 30, White to the 35, 40, he's at midfield, he is at the 40, 35, 30, the race to the 20, the 15, the 10, the five, and then for the touchdown is Chris White for LaGrange. Great speed by White, a 92 yard kickoff return as he was blazing down the far side. I've got number 14, Julius Levy. Now we'll check that. Whoever it was was speeding down the field. It may have been Levy. Let's double check it on the rear. You're right, Jim. It was Levy. And Levy with a great return for LaGrange, a 92-yard return, and what great speed. I tell you what, not only great speed, but some great moves. He eluded several defenders, and uh, that's something that Coach Yarlidge is going to talk to his kickoff coverage team about as uh, LaGrange is going to take a timeout. Yeah, we'll keep it here this time. We'll have a chance to break after the extra point is uh, kicked. Have a chance to go down and chat some with Bill. Quite a run by Chris, uh, Julius Levy. Bill? It really was. And I tell you what, I, he was really getting after it. I know, I, you know, he's been playing both ways, if you've noticed. He's been playing wide receiver on the offense, and right. he's been out on the corner covering uh, our wide receivers on, uh, on the defensive side of the football. So for him to... Uh, be able to uh, pick up a head of steam like that. I'm talking about he just took it and turned on the Jets, and he didn't slow down until he got across the end zone. So Julius Levy, and, and indeed he does play both ways, scores from 92 yards out and Frank makes it 16 to 6. And of course, uh, it's a uh, two it's two score game here. If the Gators can convert the two point conversion, that will obviously give them eight points. Another touchdown and two point conversion could tie the football game. So that's why they took the timeout and elected to go for two. Hey, we welcome Twin City Imports tonight as a new sponsor in West Monroe football. Glad to have them right there on Louisville Avenue, Monroe, Twin City Imports. Tell them you appreciate 
sponsorship of West Monroe football. They're going for two, Jim. As they trail it 16 to 6, they'll run the football. White has it, and he goes down. The try for two is no good. As the Rebels defend it nicely, they run to the right side. Ron McBeth, Jared Frost, combined on the tackle for the Rebels. We'll be back. It's 16 to 6, West Monroe. You're listening to Rebel football. Throughout Northeast Louisiana. Sean Morgan has got a kickoff for Lagrange as the Rebels send the speedsters to Mario Johnson and pardon me, DeMario Taylor and J.J. Johnson deep. Here's the kickoff by Morgan. And it's going to be fielded back there by DeMario Taylor to the 10, 15, 20. He's Taylor to the 25. He gets by a man. Yes, the 30, 35. And he's finally down at the 40-yard line. And a great return by DeMario Taylor for the West Monroe Rebels. Fielded that thing back around the 8-yard line. Returns it to the West Monroe 40. So the Rebels are not on the Lagrange end of the field, but still good field position to begin this possession of their own 40. Well, Frank, he fumbled the ball, and I think West Monroe recovered, but there's also a penalty flag at the 25-yard line, and that's going to be a clip against West Monroe, so that will put them deep in their own territory. And just when you thought at 16 to nothing they had taken control of this football game, boom, a lightning a return by Julius Levy, a, a mistake on the kickoff return by West Monroe, and now the offense is in a hole. Yeah, instead of good field position, I talked about at the 40, it'll be uh, just very average field position. Back at their own 25 after the 15-yard penalty. Chad Hardy had made the tackle on, Je on uh, DeMario that time. We so West Monroe from its own... Uh, it'll be half the distance from the 25. Oh, from the point of the foul. Right. I right. thought they were going to put it down on the 25, but from the point of the foul. So it's really deep. It's back to about the 13-yard line of the Rebels. So first down there for West Monroe. They took it to the 25 where the where the uh, penalty occurred, and then they stepped off the half the distance from there. Five wide receivers all over the field. No running backs behind Mitch Tucker, who's back to throw and fires for Barfield. He has it at the 21, and he's down to the 21-yard line. Reception by Barfield. The tackle by Julius Levy for Legrand. That's the guy who <laughs> ran 92 yards for a touchdown a moment ago. He doesn't get a breather, does he? Well, he doesn't get a breather. He was on the kickoff coverage team. Yeah. As soon as he ran down and scored a touchdown, they put him on the kickoff coverage team. And then he said, oh, by the way, go out there on defense, too, and make a tackle. So the Rebels get about seven on that completed pass to Barfield to the 21 of West Monroe. It's second down three, and again, no running back. Two wide receivers to one side, three to the other. Tucker straight back to throw it. He fires the pass, has Turner complete, and he is down at the 31-yard line on a first down reception by Michael Turner. Second catch of the evening for the senior wideout, Michael Turner. Julius Levy again makes the tackle. And West Monroe's Rebels a first down and 10 at their own 31. That was a 10-yard gain, Tucker to Turner. So plenty of looks <laughs> for this uh, LaGrange La Gator defense. And when you look at this West Monroe offense, they go two tight ends, they bunch it in, then they go five wide receivers. Now they're in a little more typical uh, pro set. This time, they'll go back to the eye back field behind Tucker. Dade is the fullback, and here's Tucker faking and uh -oh. passing, batted up in the air and intercepted. LaGrange has it the 25, and they're down to the 21-yard line. May have fumbled there, but LaGrange has uh, intercepted the football. Jamal Shelton got it, and it will be LaGrange football. He's down inside the 20, the Rebel 19. Tucker tried to throw that thing, Jim, and somebody just batted it straight up in the air, and there was Jamal Shelton to intercept and return just inside the Rebel 20-yard line. Well, poor decision that time by Mitch to try by Mitch to try to attempt that pass. Uh, he had a defender hanging on him, and he really almost threw the ball straight into the uh, his own offensive line, and the ball bounced straight up in a great interception. Call it the 20, and here's Hathaway in the shotgun rolling right. He may try to run. He's in trouble. Now he passes upfield, and that pass is almost intercepted. Glenn Trail Ware almost got his hands on the ball. Actually, Hathaway had a huge rush coming at him as he rolled to the right side, threw that thing underhanded that time, but forward. It's a forward pass, and it's an incomplete pass. Lucas Jackson was really bearing down on him, and Glenn Trail Ware almost made the interception. <laughs> he came pretty close. Hathaway thought he was throwing it away, and he almost threw it in Glenn Trail Ware's hands, and, and Hathaway was coming back to the huddle. He was kind of pointing, like guys were coming from here, and you got to get the guys over there, and the guys over there, <laughs> he said these Rebel defenders are coming from everywhere. Jailbreak time. Second and 10, the Rebels at the 20-yard line. Pardon me, the Gators at the Rebel 20. Shotgun again for Hathaway. Hands off inside oh, to no. He's hit in the backfield and dropped. Losing four. Back at the 24. He fumbled the ball. You're right, Jim. Rebels have it. Rebels have recovered the football at the 24. They tried to hand it to White. He bobbled the ball. J.R. Hayden has the fumble recovery. The Rebels get it back on the turnover. The hit was by Glentrell Ware to force the fumble. Let's check in with Bill on the sideline. 
Well, guys, if you're if you're a Lagrange Gator, you can't have written a, a worse script than has happened in this first half. And other than the than the play with the kickoff return, they have not done anything offensively whatsoever. And so now it's up again to the defense who have played the, most of this entire first half to have to stop the Rebels once again. Rebels lead it 16 to six with 10 minutes to play in the second quarter. Tucker to pass Dave. again over the middle, incomplete. Intended for Edward Dade, but he was covered back there. Julius Creighton was on him. And an incomplete pass will make it second down and 10 yards to go. Bring it back to the line of scrimmage, which is the Rebel 24 yard line. It looked like number 43, Chris White with the coverage. It looked like he jumped over the top of Edward Dade. He kind of missed time to pass a little bit. And some of the fans thought that he bumped Dade a little bit early, but no call was made. Dade the fullback, J.J. Johnson is the tailback. Mitch Tucker the senior at quarterback. Rebels have wide receivers to each side in McVay and Barfield. And here's Tucker faking, flag down, pass away. It is incomplete, intended for the tight end over the middle, Britt Barnes, and he almost held it, couldn't quite stretch out to make the reception. And as I said, we do have a penalty marker down. Let's see what that is all about. Adam Barfield started just a little bit too early. You're right, illegal procedure, illegal shift against the Rebels. So the option will rest with Lagrange. If they turn it down, it'll be third and 10. If they take it, second down 15. I think they'll probably refuse this penalty. They will. So the Rebels have third down and 10 yards to go from their own 24-yard line. The Rebels uh, haven't been too successful on third down and long tonight. And again, the Lagrange uh, defense, as Bill mentioned, has played really well. If the offense had done anything here in the first half, uh, they might uh, be even closer than 16 to 6. For sure. Here's Barfield wide right as McVay goes left. In the slot to the right side is Michael Turner, the 6'4 wide receiver. Mitch Tucker has an eye behind him on third down and 10 from their own 24 yard line. Tucker takes that ball and gives to Dade across the 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Midfield, the race is on to the 40, to the 30, the 25, 20, he's going to the 10, the 5, touchdown. Edward Dade for the Rebels, a 76 yard touchdown run. Wow. And Bill, I don't know if you had a chance to keep up with Dade. Wait a minute, we've got a penalty flag at the 45 yard line. There's a flag at the 45. Bill, what's that about? Well, we're going to get it right here. Looks like a clip. Uh, they called it on number 25. I don't know if there's a 25 in our, uh, in our, no, they called it on 52. 52. And I guess that was something downfield. And well, I tell you what, that's, uh, and the coach is talking to him about that. He was 30 yards ahead of him. And then there was a clip blocking the back, so it's going to be, well, that's going to bring it back to the 30-yard line. So what, what was it, third and 10? So now it's going to be fourth down and five, and West Monroe, instead of a touchdown, will have to punt the football. Well, well, that's a big, big, big penalty. And what a great down. run it was by Edward Day. It was, and uh, we got a chance to look at it on the replay, and it, it, appeared, did, uh, it appeared that number 52 did come down and block somebody from behind, but it was a tough, tough call. But it'll be third down here. Third down, down, yeah. Get the play down again, of course, because of the penalty. Third down and five now. Rebels at the 30. Their own 30-yard line, nullifying the touchdown. Give it in. Uh, here's Tucker no. faking. He's keeping it in big trouble and losing yardage all the way back to about the 26-yard line is Mitch Tucker. Sean McGother and others came across there. So the Rebels lose yardage on that third down play, and now it is going to be fourth down. In fact, fourth down very near, about eight, nine yards needed for the first down. Well, not quite that much. Actually, they gave him his forward progress to the 29, believe it or not. So it's fourth down, about six yards to go. But nevertheless, the Rebels will punt it for the first time tonight as Mims Boyce drops back in punt formation. Well, that penalty was big. It's a shame, too. Edward Day with just an electrifying 76-yard run. Well, he outran everybody. High uh -oh. snap over the head of the punter, Boyce. He goes back to pick it up in the he end zone. It. He tried to kick it. He didn't do it. It's a touchdown for Lagrange. They have recovered the football in the end zone. Mims Boyce, just as LaGrange punter did earlier, had it snapped over his head into the end zone. Mims tried to go back there and kick it out of the end zone, which would have been a safety, a wise play, and he tried to, but somehow he missed the football when he tried to slide and kick the ball, and it's recovered by Dwight Butler for LaGrange, and with 9-13 to play in the second quarter, it's now 6 Boyce, the ball took a bad hop. He tried to kick it, missed it, and uh, LaGrange covered it up for a touchdown, and it looks like LaGrange is... He's going to get a five-yard penalty here. On the extra point no, before uh, going against the Rebels, they'll move it uh, one and a half yards closer. Let's see if they decide to go for two now as they'll penalize the Rebels half the distance. They'll still kick the extra point, I think, as they trail it by four, 16 to 12. They want to try to get within three, and that way they have a great field sure. goal kicker, by the way. 
and uh, they want to try to get within three points. That's Sean Morgan Jim's talking about, and he is about to attempt this extra point. Try to make it a three-point football game here in the second quarter. High snap, but controlled, and the kick Block. blocked. The kick is blocked. It's on the ground. It's no good, and we'll return. We've got an interesting ball game. It's West Monroe 16, LaGrange 12. You're listening to West Monroe football. Now the Rebels were rocking along with a 16-0 lead, but right now it is 16-12 as the Gators have scored twice. Kind of an unusual fashion, and here's the kickoff by Sean Morgan for the Gators. It is high, and nice kickoff. J.J. all the way back to the 4, takes it across the 5. J.J. Johnson, the 10-15. He's at the 20. He is knocked down the 22-yard line. Rebels take J. J. it there. Let's send it to the field and check in with Bill. Well, guys, just a... A series of special team errors for West Monroe. The, the snap over the punter's head, and Mims couldn't find the, find the football to kick it. Of course, the kickoff returned for a touchdown, and that's that's your two scores. Other than that, LaGrange hasn't shown anything or the ability at this point to move the ball offensively. We'll have to see if West Monroe now can answer that last score. Rebels go from their own 22-yard line of the pro I formation. Quarterback Mitch Tucker takes the ball, runs the option, fakes, and keeps to the 25, breaks a tackle 30. Mitch Tucker, 35, finally down the 35. You see Mitch Tucker running that football and slapping tacklers away. He ran for about 13 yards that time. And a first down in tennis, Jamal Shelton finally got it down. That was a fine run, Jim, by Mitch Tucker. It was a good run. That's six carries now for 39 yards for Mitch Tucker uh, on the night. And really just a... Uh, you look up and you see LaGrange with 12 points, and you say, how can they score 12 points? Because they haven't picked up a first down <laughs> on offense. Absolutely. First down, West Monroe. It's on 35, and here's a give to the fullback. Straight ahead goes Banks, and room to the 45. Ten more yards across the 40 to the 45-yard line goes Banks. So the senior fullback, Mark Banks, who had 242 yards coming into tonight's game, gets about 10. Jarrett Naylor knocks him down. It is a first down and 10 at the Rebel 45, and Banks is amounting some yardage himself. He does. He now has 32 yards on five carries. Barfield goes right, McVay to the left side as the split end. The pro eye formation from their own 45 for West Monroe down the line of the option. Fake by Tucker, keeps it to midfield and hit at the 50 and dropped at the 47-yard line of Lagrange as quarterback Mitch Tucker. He got seven off the option that time as Chris White wrestles him down in Lagrange territory at the 48-yard line. So West Monroe moving the football pretty well here on this uh, possession, and they look like they're kind of going with a sense of urgency now as LaGrange has pulled to within four. Look determined to run it with the option, too, this time. And that's what they came out uh, at the beginning of the football game to do with two tight ends. Second and three, West Monroe. Dade is the fullback. J.J. Johnson is the tailback, and Dade gets the handoff, and he runs to the 45, the little guy to the 40. Edward Dade is finally wrestled down inside the 35, all the way down to the 33-yard line of the Gators. That's a 24-yard run by Edward Dade. 165-pound junior, and Jim, you could say he pulled his way for the last 10 yards with a lot of power and great heart. First down, West Monroe at the 33. Well, he certainly did. It looked like he was wrapped up at about the 36, and he found his way to pick up about three more yards. He was your guest uh, Thursday night on the show. He was. He and Demario Taylor. First down from the 33-yard line of the Gators, the pro I formation. Tucker's going to give it to the little guy again, and he banks it down to the 30-yard line. Got about three more that time. Straight ahead and hit by Chad Hardy, a very fine junior linebacker, along with defensive end Jamal Shelton. The Rebels go from the 30-yard line of LaGrange. In fact, the 31. Only give them two that time. Second down, eight yards to go from the 31-yard line of LaGrange. But a good drive going here, sparked by the runs of Edward Dade and Mark Banks. And right now, LaGrange, Frank is going to take a timeout. They're beginning to wear down. Timeout on the field. We'll pause, too. Seven minutes to play in the first half. It's 16-12, to 12, the Rebels. You're listening to West Monroe Football. And he banks it inside the 30, down to the 28-yard line. Got three. It's going to be third down, five yards to go as Dade carries two in a row there. And again, Chad Hardy, the linebacker, makes the tackle. Hey, remember uh, Group 1 Realty for all your real estate needs in Monroe and West Monroe. The fine folks at Group 1. We were just looking over the stats during the break. Eight total yards in offense for the LaGrange Gators, yet uh, they're within four points at 16 to 12. Of course, there are two touchdowns uh, on a fumbled punt, snap, and a kickoff return for a touchdown. It's an odd football game. Ball, ball bounces a lot of funny ways. Third and five for the Rebels, and here's Tucker running into the fullback and keeping it stopped at the 31-yard line. He 
fought his way for a yard or two, did Mitch Tucker, but I think a little busted play, Jim, as he ran into Edward Day, taking it down the line of the option. He so and Day, fourth down. You're right, he and Day just simply ran into each other, and that busted that play from the beginning. Fourth down and three for the Rebels. This has been a very impressive drive, but now the Rebels find themselves with this fourth down situation and six minutes to play here in the first half. They started, the Rebels did at their own 22. They're now at about the 27-yard line of the Gators, but if they don't pick up this first down, we still got a ball game. Banks is at fullback now, and J.J. Johnson, the tailback. Here we go. They need three yards down the line of the option, a fake by Tucker. He keeps it. He has the first down. He is down to the 21-yard line, and good running by Mitch Tucker. Faking to Mark Banks down the line of the right side, turning it down field, and again running with good authority is quarterback Mitch Tucker. Mike Prudham wrestled him down. First down, the Rebels at the 21-yard line of the Gators. 52 yards now for Mitch Tucker on nine carries. He's been the workhorse tonight running the football and becoming known as a running quarterback this guy who throws so well the West Monroe's Rebels with a 16 to 12 lead and a first down and 10 of the Gator 21 tight ends left and right for West Monroe one wide out is McVay to the right side and quarterback Mitch Tucker is going to fake that ball and keep it again and go down just inside the 20 near the 19 yard line got a couple of yards that time as Chris Walker knocks him down just option, run, run, run. I don't think we've tried to throw a pass on this drive uh, yet. You're right, we have not. And a very tight formation, too. They've used uh, tight ends on both sides during this particular series. And I think part of, they want to run the football because a lot of these Gators uh, go both ways. And so I think part of the game plan is to wear these guys down. Second down and eight yards to go. The Rebels at the 19-yard line of LaGrange with 4.42 to play in the first half. Pitch it out to J.J. Johnson, sweeping right towards the corner. 15 to the 10. He's at the 5, down there to the 5-yard line. Goes J.J. Johnson. Nice run with a toss sweep as he came right. Justin Creighton finally tackled him in the open field, but the Rebels had a first down and goal to go at the five-yard line of LeGron. And I thought J.J. was going to score that time. It looked like he had a seam if he'd have kept it back towards the middle of the field. Uh, he was running to the right sideline, then he cut back to his left. I thought he had a seam to the left, but a good job by Acrishan in making the stop. Rebels first and goal to the five-yard line. J.J. gets a breather. Demario Taylor in at tailback. Tight ends on both sides of the Rebels. Banks is the fullback, needing five yards now. First and goal. And here's Tucker giving to Banks inside. He's down to about the two-yard line. Stop there. Maybe not that far as the big pileup occurred about the three-yard line. So good job defensively by the Gators that time, led by Mike Pruitt on the linebacker. At the three, it'll be second down and goal to go for West Monroe with just under four minutes remaining in the second quarter. Tucker with 52 yards, Banks with 34, J.J. with 35, and Dade with 22, and he had 76 on a long run that was called back. Pretty balanced running attack for West Monroe. From the three, second down, goal to go. Same formation, tight ends on both sides. Banks again, touchdown, Rebels. Mark Banks. <laughs> and six for the Rebels. It's a 77-yard drive, totally on the ground. And the Rebels lead it 22 to 12. Now, that was pretty impressive. Somehow, LaGrange, LaGrange found a way to get back in this football game at 16 to 12 with a couple of special team uh, scores. But then right back came West Monroe with a great drive. Smash mouth it down the field, running the option. Let's check in with Bill. Well, I think you're right, Jim. And I think that that I think the, that we all know that West Monroe is a, a better football team than LaGrange. And they just took advantage of a couple of opportunities, made good on those things because they've not done anything really to help themselves. And West Monroe had a beautiful drive all on the ground to counter that last score. Extra point by Lee Deal is up and good and will return. 3.40 to play in the half. 23 to 12, the Rebels. This is West Monroe football. Who out Northeast? First half of this football game. It's got an unusual game here in the 2000 homecoming contest. The Rebels have now built a 23 to 12 lead, but that was a most impressive 77-yard drive for the score and every play on the ground. Run, run, run. Lee Deal is going to kick it off. Julius Levy, who returned 192 yards for a score earlier for the Gators, is deep along with Chris White. Here's the kickoff by Deal. Hits it high, but a little bit short. Got a bounce Somebody to get back. It. Somebody Rebels may get the ball. Levy, I know White gets back and picks it up the 15. He uh, gives ground to the 10, and he goes down there. Dusty Bastion, who does a great job on these special teams, got to him. That ball came up short. It hit the ground, and for a moment, the Rebels had a chance to get to the ball. 
White did recover the thing, but he was running backwards by the time he did, and his momentum <laughs> took him back to the 10. The Rebels tackled him there, and that's where the Gators will take it, their own 10-yard line. And you're right, had that ball not bounced up into White's hands, West Monroe had a chance to get that football. All this comes with three and a half minutes to play in the first half. 23 to 12, an 11 point lead for West Monroe. And the Gators do not have a first down yet on offense. Not yet. They go from the eye this time. And they Levy. got a handoff to Levy on a little counter play. And he breaks one tackle, but tackled in the open field about the 13 yard line. Got three yards on the play. Levy was set up as a wing to the left side that time, went in motion. Took the handoff and Ron Macbeth, the very fine senior safety for the Rebels, was there to make the stop. Maybe three on the play out near the 13-yard line. It'll be second down and seven yards to go. Hey, I mean, he's your best weapon tonight with that kickoff return, so somehow you try to get him the football. Give uh, Coach Johns credit. I'd give it to him. This time, three receivers to the wide side, the left side of the football field, and they'll run it inside of the fullback. They fumble the ball out Lucas. on the ground. The Rebels have it. Rebels Lucas Jackson recovers the football at the 13-yard line of the Gators. And that's really a big blow for the Gators, Frank. Uh, they, they fought their way and somehow got 12 points on the board in the first half. They're within 11, and then just a costly, costly turnover. Then at that time, the quarterback just trying to hand it off, never got the clean handoff. It went to the ground. There was Lucas Jackson for the recovery. The very fine middle linebacker, so West Monroe takes over. First down and 10 at the 13-yard line of the Gators. Plenty of time with 2.53 left here in the first half. Banks the fullback in the eye. J.J. Johnson, the tailback. Two receivers in the slot go right. Banks, Banks. has it to the 10. Banks to the 5. Banks is in for the touchdown again for West Monroe. <laughs> Looking like a man playing against children that time. Banks just <laughs> blasted down the center of the football field and scores it from 13. A lot of credit to that offensive line. Chris Valerie, Rundell Hill, William Gregory, Hank Hamilton, and big Andrew Whitworth. Let's check in with Bill. Well, guys, I think you would agree that the fact that this Gator defense has been on the football field for most of this entire first half is, has caused them some problems there. They are fatigued, and they've, they've been talking about it. Uh, you can hear them on the sidelines that they're tired, calling for subs. Obviously, nobody to come in because they hadn't been subbing much. Levy came out that last series, but... They're, they're, they're just, uh, the tongues are hanging out. They're exhausted because they've had to play this entire uh, half on the defensive side of the football. Lee Deal has just added the extra point, and the West Monroe Rebels have made it 30 to 12. Hey, we want to thank Plumbing Incorporated, one of our many fine sponsors. Plumbing Incorporated for all your plumbing and heating and air conditioning needs. Be sure to call Plumbing Incorporated, your Delta treatment plant dealer on Cypher Street in West Monroe, and also the largest Bryant dealer in Northeast Louisiana. Jim, yeah. tell us about Arkansas Stone. Our thanks to Arkansas Stone and Masonry Supplies. Despite the heat, get ready for the winter with fireplace inserts and wood stoves. See Troy Cuff at Arkansas Stone, Highway 15, West Monroe, Arkansas Stone. And our appreciation to DP Outdoors, letting you get ready for the hunting season. Your hunting headquarters. Two locations to serve you at 100 Mill Street in West Monroe and 2820 Sterlington Road in Monroe. DP Outdoors. Our thanks to all our sponsors that help make these broadcasts possible. So the Rebels now with a 30 to 12 lead will kick it off to the Lagrange Gators. You know, last year we played these guys as we alluded to in the pregame show twice, and we weren't able to put up 30 points on the board. I don't, I do not believe. Yeah, these rebels just proving over and over each week just how good a football team they are. Lee Deal to kick it off, kicks it high and extremely short, very high, and it's going to be caught out of bounds actually by the Gators, and that'll send a flag down. Gators will get it on the 35-yard line. Lee Deal kicked that one a mile high, but it didn't go very long. So the Gators will have it at the 35-yard line. If he caught it in the field of play, he would run out of bounds, and that would be just a normal play. You'd get it where you run out of bounds. But they did throw the flag, and they're going to get the ball at the 35. So they're going to rule that he caught it out of bounds. They will indeed. 
And I thought they might take a chance on uh, getting the kickoff again and trying to get uh, what Levy another opportunity to run a kickback. Yeah, maybe so, but they have it to 35. Shotgun for Hathaway. He's going to run the ball straight up the gut, and he goes down and regaining two yards to about the 37, maybe even not that, as Mims Boyce knocks him down for West Monroe. So Jacob Hathaway, the senior quarterback, gets two yards to the 37. It'll be second down and eight yards to go for the Gators. And Frank, it looks like the Gators now have about, oh, what, 11 yards total offense in the first half? No wow. first downs. Wow. But 12 points. Roderick Antoine is wide to the left. Levy has gone right. Shotgun for Hathaway. Second down and eight. There's the rush. Hathaway steps up and runs, and he is going to go to the 35-37. Got back to the line of scrimmage. That's all. Had a wave of tacklers, but he kind of split the seam in the middle, and then J.R. Hayden crashed down on him, along with Lucas Jackson. And they combine on the tackle at the 37, maybe the 38-yard line. Give them a yard. Third down, seven yards to go from the 38. A lot of pressure from the left side applied by Glentrail Ware. That forced Hathaway back inside, straight up in the pocket where he ran into Hayden and others. Homecoming Queen Randy Day at the court will be presented at halftime. And they're stopping play. Defensive end. Uh, Gia, uh, Kay Sanders came across, and the reason he did is because the tight end Teddy Alfred had rared up there. This should cost the Gators five yards. I think it's going to be West Monroe, Oops. right? Guess not. Maybe he, he didn't rear up. He, well, he reared up when he saw Case coming. <laughs> Case did come across, no doubt about that. And the five yard goes against the Rubble. So moving out to the 43 of Lagrange. And it's third down there. And about two and a half yards needed for the first down. And, a, you know, relatively big play here. Lagrange, a shotgun, big rush coming. Sets up a screen over the middle, has his man. That'll be the first first down across the 40. Knocked down at the 40, across the 45 of the 49 yard line is Dwight Butler. Case Sanders made the tackle, but they completed the, the screen pass to the fullback Butler after the quarterback had backed off with a big rush coming. Nicely devised play by the Gators and their first first down of the game at their own 49-yard line. Great call by uh, Mike Johns. A chance for the Gators to score before the half ends. Rebels ahead 30 to 12. Shotgun for Hathaway throwing complete to the Rebel 45 and down to the 40, breaking a tackle, and finally down to the 38-yard line is Roderick Antoine. That'll be another first down for the Gators. Jared Frost wrestles him down, but first down and 10 for Lagrange at the Rebel 38-yard line with 35 seconds left in the first half. And they'll up the clock at 35 seconds to play and move the chains. So Lagrange trying desperately to put some more points on the board here in the first half. And remember, they've got a great kicker. 38-yard line of the Rebels. Hathaway rolling right, picks up a block, looks, rushes on, passes away, and thrown low and incomplete. Big pressure coming. Pressure that time from Mims Boyce. Blitzing from that linebacking spot after Hathaway had come out of the pocket, rolling to the right side. So 26 seconds remain, and the Gators second down and 10 from the Rebel 38-yard line. So really the hurry-up offense right at the end of the... Uh, First half has been the uh, the best that this offensive football team has looked for Lagrange in the first half. The only back back there with Hathaway is the fullback Butler in the shotgun, second and ten. High snap, but he controls it and rolls right, throws back the other way on the screen, and it's dove, dove uh, dived for and down at the 42-yard line. They lost yardage on the completed pass to tight end Teddy Alford. It was a good idea, Jim. They were setting up the screen. But the pass floated out there, and Alfred had to dive to get to the football, and they lose yardage in the completed pass. And the clock continues to run. Four seconds to go as uh, the quarterback grounds the ball, and it's uh, at least three seconds to go in the first half. He spiked Which, it to stop the clock at three seconds to play, so they'll have time at least to get off one more play. And of course, that cost them a down in the spike, too. So now it's fourth down and 14 from the Rebel 42. And that doesn't matter with three seconds to go, of course. But you're right. That play was, a, that was well set up. Uh, Jared Frost had come in position to make the tackle, but he had eluded three blockers in, in doing so. But uh, that, that play had some potential. 
Shotgun for Hathaway. Jacob Hathaway for Lagrange has the snap. There's the rush. He's going to throw it as far as he can. He throws it down the field, and Bostic intercepts it at the five, and he's back to the 10-yard line and down there as the first half comes to an end. That's Chase's second interception in the first half. And the third of the year as the Rebels go to intermission with a 30-12 to lead as they leave the field. Bill's going to catch up with Coach Childs. Here's Bill. Coach, I thought we were going to have something to talk about. At one point in this football game, LaGrange had eight yards of offense, no first downs, and yet the score was 16 to 12. Well, that's what happens when you mess up in the kicking game. Uh, you know, uh, we, they had a great kickoff return for a score, and then, you know, we snapped the ball over the punter's head, and he does a bonehead deal in the uh, end zone, and we got to get we got to get our kids coached up on what to do down there. I mean, we've talked to them. But evidently, we're going to need to have to center some bad snaps in practice and practice and simulate that situation. But uh, other than that, you know, uh, you take those two th plays away from them. You know, we played pretty good offensively. Uh, not really pleased, but not bad either. Well, Coach, you got an 18-point lead at halftime, and if not for a clip, some 30 yards, uh, our runner 30 yards ahead of that play, uh, we'd had six more. Well, uh, that's the drive we we uh, fumbled uh, the punt on it, mishandled the punt snap. But uh, uh, you know, but that's a, that's a dumb thing right there. The block occurred about 30 yards behind the ball carrier. You never block behind a ball carrier, and, and uh, got called for clipping. And uh, you know, that's just a mistake. And hopefully, hopefully, uh, we learn from this, uh, and we don't do this ever again. Okay, coach. Enjoy halftime, guys. Up. Uh So the total offense for LaGrange in the first half was 31 yards. Not real impressive, but the impressive thing, they got 12 points. They did do that. Rebels had 52 yards rushing from Mitch Tucker. He also had a touchdown. Mark Banks scored three touchdowns in the first half, 50 yards on eight carries. J.J. Johnson had 35 yards, and Edward Dade had four carries for 22. Tucker passing. Seven of nine uh, for, 50, uh, pardon me, five of nine for 55 yards, intercepted once. Barfield caught two passes, Turner caught two, Johnson caught one. Rebel total offense, 214, 14 first downs, 31 yards for the uh, Gators, one first down. That came right before halftime. I thought they picked up a couple of first downs there at the end of the first half. I think they did, too. I think Ray must have missed one there. I thought they had one on the pass and one on the run. Maybe not. Anyway, we're going to get ready to get the second half underway here as LaGrange will kick it off the Rebels. Rebels are going to receive the kickoff and move from our left to right. That'll be west to east here on a cool night in Rebels Stadium. The kickoff by Morgan sails it down the field, and Demario Taylor's in the end zone. He'll not be able to bring it out of there. About three yards deep, so the Rebels will take it out of the 20-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go, leading 30-12 to 12 as the third, uh, the third quarter, the second half, gets underway. Pretty good kick that time by Morgan. He had the wind at his back. He used it to his benefit and bomb the ball into the end zone. So the Rebels have 80 yards to go if they want to score a touchdown. So the Rebels from their own 20 yard line, Mitch, Tucker and company out there. I backfield, Banks and JJ back there in the eye. Here's Tucker down the line, faking and keeping and having some room. 25, 27 yard line goes Tucker across the 30, 32 yard line goes Mitch Tucker, 12 yards on the option. And the Rebels open the second half off the option with a first down run of 12 yards by Mitch Tucker. Chris White wrestles it down. First down and 10, call it the 31-yard line. So 11 yards for Tucker on that play. Frankie now has 63 yards uh, on the ball game. A great block that time by Andrew Whitworth, a pancake block. Dade and Taylor now enter the game of the running back spots behind Tucker from their own 31, the Rebels. A slot set to the left side, and Dade has it, and he bangs it out to the 35. He drives to the 36-yard line and stopped there by Chad Hardy, the linebacker. So about five yards for the little guy. I tell you what, Dade has great quickness, Jim, and he can move all over the field, but also he runs with good power when the occasion calls for it. <laughs> he's got all the skills you need in a running back. You know, he's got the strength. He's got the speed. He's elusive. <laughs> you name it, that young man, uh, he can do it when it comes to running the football. So the Rebels from their own 36-yard line will second down and five yards to go, beginning the third quarter of play, enjoying a 30-12 to 12 lead. By the way, Dave can catch the ball pretty well, too. Yes, can. he can. No doubt about it. He's in there at fullback behind Tucker.
down with Chad Hardy, the linebacker, helping. It's fourth down, about two for the Rebels with a football on the 32-yard line of LeGrange. No hesitation, Coach Childs and Coach Stone, the offensive coordinator. None whatsoever. Send in the play, the new personnel, and we've got a fourth down conversion attempt coming up. Banks is the fullback. That line includes Chris Bowery in center, Rundell Hill and Hank Hamilton at guard, William Gregory and Andrew Whitworth at tackle. Tight ends on both sides. Fourth down, two yards to go. Mitch Tucker barks signals, takes the ball, gives it to Banks. He is hit, and he's no, oh, Tucker, faked Tucker. by Tucker, but he's pulled down, and he's short of the first down. Well, good idea as he faked it to the fullback, Banks. But Eric Dupre came up from safety to make the tackle on Tucker, and the Rebels are short of the first down. Taking over on downs will be the LaGrange Gators, and they'll take it to their own 32. No gain of that last play by Mitch Tucker. And again, the Gators just doing a good job on defense. They had an interception the last time the Rebels were moving the football. This time, they come up with a great stop on fourth down and short. Hathaway has one running back, Butler behind him. Couple of receivers left, one goes right. First down and 10 from their own 32-yard line and give it to Butler, the fullback. He banks it out across the 35 to the 36-yard line and goes down there after gaining four. Ricky Gio and Glentrell Ware knock him down for the Rebels. And somebody really belted <laughs> the big fullback, Butler, and I'm not sure who it was. I'm going to take a look on the replay here. Maybe I can see that, but it may have been one of the safeties coming up, but they really put a lick on Dwight Butler. Happy birthday to... Cleta Munholland. We also wished happy birthday earlier to Beth Brewster. Second down six right now for the Gators at their own 36. Again, the fullback has it. Some room across the 40, 45. Well, that's White, and he is tripped up short of the midfield stripe at the 48-yard line. But a first down run by Chris White inside. Mims Boyce, the linebacker, knocks him down, but not before the Gators have this first down at their own 48-yard line. That's one of the few first downs they've had tonight. That's going to be the third first down of the ball game, a nifty run by Chris White. He just did elude B.J. Simmons on the run. Gators have one wide out. Levy wide to the right side, the flanker, the split in. Antoine goes left. First down and 10, give it inside. White hit in the backfield, missed, but now the second man knocks him down. They knock, knock him down back at the 44. Lucas Jackson came across there. He got by Glentrell Ware first. Both linebackers were coming, Jim, but he couldn't avoid Jackson. who knocked him down back at the 44. The loss is about four yards on the play. It's second and 14. Well, you're right, Glentrell Ware coming off the left side. And Lucas Jackson coming straight up the middle. Second and 14, the Gators. And a quick pass out here is caught and a gain of two yards to the 44-yard line. That reception is by Clifton Lewis. Lewis dove and caught the ball almost out of his tracks at the line of scrimmage. So it's only a two-yard gain. It's third down and 12 for the Gators at their own 46. Well, what they were trying to do is what West Monroe does, just throwing the ball out to Demario Taylor, J.J. Johnson, almost a wide receiver screen. And uh, the wide receiver didn't realize he had a lot of cushion, and he just stood there waiting for the ball. The ball was thrown as if he needed to start running forward to catch it. Dr. Spears had an alumni boogie band playing in front of the stands. Third down and 12, Hathaway trying to pass, rolling right. Rebels after him, but he rolls to the right side and passes incomplete as he threw it back against the green and a diving try for the ball by Chris White, but he couldn't quite come up with it as Chase Bostick was providing the coverage. So Hathaway sprinting all over the backfield that time, and they have fourth down and 12 from their own 44-yard line to the Gators. But I tell you, Frank, this... This quarterback, Jacob Hathaway, he's pretty elusive. He's been under heavy pressure all night. A couple of times they've gotten to him, but uh, more often than not, he seems to sidestep that rush and at least get the ball off. And he also punts, and he's back to punt it right now. J.J. Johnson is deep, a minute and a half to play in the third quarter. There's the pass from center, and D.J. Holloway providing the rush, but the pass, the kick is away. J.J. the 15 returns the other way to the 20, 25. J.J. the 30 out of bounds across the way at the 35-yard line is J.J. Johnson. He's always fun to, to watch return the football. The Rebels will take it with a minute 22 left in the third. They have it at their own 35-yard line, 39-yard punt, 20-yard return. Let's see if Bill's microphone is going to work. Let's check in again. Well, let's see if it does. How about that? It we does. We got you working. All right. 
Well, I tell you what, when you had the last question that we had was what happened to the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, and the play is getting real physical. The garage has uh, been taken out of this football game, and they're very, very disappointed in the way things have transpired. Tucker's Good day. to throw one, and he has stayed in midfield of the 45-40. Under the 39-yard line of the Gators is Edward Dade. Right across the middle with the Rebels, a 27-yard pass play from Mitch Tucker to Edward Day. Julius Creighton made the tackle, and Jim, you said earlier, Dade's a good pass receiver, and certainly he is. We saw it right there. That's going to be Edward Dade's third reception on the season. And, Frank, when Tucker threw his first interception, he was looking for Dade on that same route. First down to the 39 of the Gators for the Rebels. A minute to play in the third quarter. Give it to Dade at fullback. Running inside the 35. He bangs it down to the 31-yard line. That's eight yards straight ahead running by the little guy, Dade. He made the catch on the other play. He runs it this time. Chris Walker knocks him down, and the Rebels have second down and two from the 31-yard line with 50 seconds left in the third period. Edward now has 41 carries. Excuse me, 41 yards on seven carries tonight. He's going to leave the game and be replaced by Mark Banks at fullback. Tailback is Demario Taylor this time. Second down, two yards to go from the Lagrange 31, and it's Banks with it to the 30. First down run down to about the 25-yard line. Hard running again by the senior Mark Banks. 194-pound fullback. First down, the Rebels of the 25 as Chad Harley wrestles him down along with Eric Dupre for Lagrange. And Mark now with 66 yards on 11 carries. The leading rusher is still Mitch Tucker, the quarterback, and he has 70 yards on 13 carries. Good balance rushing by all of those guys. And that should bring the third quarter to uh, an end in no scoring in the third quarter. Indeed. We'll be back with a final period of play. It's West Monroe 30, LeGrand's 12. You're listening to West Monroe Football. First down and 10, the 25-yard line. Tucker to throw the football has Turner, the 50, down to the 12-yard line goes Michael Turner. Came back to play during that commercial on the radio audience, and the Rebel quarterback Mitch Tucker finds Michael Turner open, Jim, and a first down reception by Turner would have been, but they got to call it back. A penalty marker has gone down. Turner had actually gotten the thing down to the 12 after making the catch from Mitch Tucker, but they got to call it back with a penalty against the Rebels. Bill, it's going to go against West Monroe. Was it a holding penalty? Again, we're having some uh, technical difficulties. That's going to be an offensive pass interference, Frank, and that's going to be a loss of down. And the penalty and the yardage. It's going to move the ball back to the... 40-yard line, a 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. And loss of a down. So second down and 25 yards to go. That's a big penalty. They would have had it down at the 11-yard line with the first down. J.J., excuse me, uh, Michael Turner and another receiver were split wide to the right, and it must have been the lead receiver because uh, Turner was wide open. I don't think he had a chance to push anybody. Demario Taylor's in the slot this time as he's going to be the pass receiver, makes the grab of the flat 40, pulled it out with a good tackle in the open field of the 38-yard line. Demario had some running room, too, but he couldn't get by Julius Creighton, the cornerback, who pulled him down to the 38-yard line. So the Rebels gain only about two yards on that completed pass to Demario Taylor. Third down now and 23 yards to go. Frank, we want to let everyone know that the Moss Point tickets uh, will be on sale Monday morning at the school office. So if you want to get a ticket for the Moss Point game, go to the school office uh, Monday morning. Should be a big crowd down in Moss Point, Mississippi, down near Biloxi. Third down, 23 yards to go. The Rebels now at the 38-yard uh, line. Tucker's in trouble. They sack him, blitzing and knocking him down. Sack back at the 45-yard line of LaGrange. Tucker never had a chance as he backpedaled, and Dwight Butler coming strong. Knocked him down and sacked him at the 45. It's fourth down and extremely long for the Rebels, and West Monroe appears to be planning to punt it away. Well, that's what they're going to have to do. It's fourth down, and gee whiz, Frank, that's about 30 yards to go, isn't it? Uh, at least, yeah. Be hard to punt it for a first down. Julius Levy is deep. Mims boys to punt the football. Gets the pass from center and the kick away by Mims. Hits it nicely. That ball's going to bounce across the goal line. Hit it real nicely. It'll be 
LaGrange football out on the 20-yard line. Still no score in the second half of this game. We played in a minute and a half into the fourth period. And LaGrange takes it to the 20. Let's check in again with Bill Norris. Well, sorry, Bill. Evidently, we can't. We can try to get this worked out. And here come the Gators at their own 20 yard line. Butler, the single running back behind Hathaway. Hathaway Fumble. fumbles the football, scramble for it. I think the Rebels have it at the 13, 17 yard line. They do. B.J. Simmons is on the ball. First down, Rebels at the 17 yard line of LeGrand. Frank, the quarterback, Hathaway, he dropped back to pass, was going to throw a little screen pass to Clifton Lewis. And it just fell out of his hand. Kind of like the old Statue of Liberty, but it just fell out, huh? And there was nobody to hand off to. <laughs> so the Rebels get it right there, the 17 of the Gators. No score in the second half of the game after the Rebels built up a 30 to 12 halftime lead. But get excellent field position here at the Gator 17 and give it a bank. 15 to the 10, Look bank out. to the 5. Hopping his way down to oh, the 3 five. yard line. Maybe the 1. Banks is finally off his feet at the 1 yard line. What a run. A 16 yard ramble by senior fullback Mark Banks. And Frank, he almost scored. They had him at the 5 yard line and somehow he dove his way and lunged his way and he almost scored a touchdown. They were just hanging out for dear life. Kept trying to hop out of that tackle like you used to do in the backyard games, and your shoe would come off. That's right. And he's now the leading rusher on the evening for West Monroe. 12 carries, 82 yards for Mark Banks. First and go. Banks has already scored three touchdowns tonight. Let's see if he gets it here. He, no, Tucker will take it in. He fakes to Banks, and Mitch Tucker gets the score. And the Rebels add six with their first score of the second half. And that's Mitch Tucker's second touchdown rushing the football tonight. So Tucker has two. Banks has the other three. Lee Deal is going to come on to try to add the extra point for West Monroe now. It's 36 to 12 at 9.53 left in this football game. Adam Barfield will hold. There's the snap. The ball is down. The extra point is up. And good. And we'll be back to Rebel Stadium with a score. West Monroe 37, LaGrange 12. You're listening to West Monroe Football. Rebels recover the LaGrange fumble and then a score from 17 yards out. Mark Banks got him to the one. Mitch Tucker got the touchdown. And it's 37 to 12. A little less than 10 minutes remaining in this football game. Lee Deal with the wind at his back. And a pretty good win. Let's see if he kicks another one into the end zone. Well, the wind uh, was so blew strong that it blew it off the tee, the football that is. Hey, Acme Glass for Auto Home or Commercial Glass with certified technicians, 24-hour emergency service. Acme Glass and Mirror with three locations in West Monroe, Monroe, and Ruston. Acme Glass, give us a break. Now there, wind's blowing that thing off there twice, and now looks like Justin Folks offered to hold it for him, but Lee says, let's try it one more time. Well, let's try it one more time, and let's say thanks to St. Francis Medical Center, the most comprehensive health care in Northeast Louisiana. We care about families. So now Deal's going to kick it off once again. Approaches the ball, gets his foot into it, hits it nicely, but he won't kick it into the end zone, taking it to the 10. Levy to the 15, cuts out to the 20, puts on some speed again, goes back to try to go back the other way, but fell to the ground and a flag is down. Levy's down back around the 20 yard line and a clip is going to be called against the Gators. And Bill, they tell us uh, they've worked out the technical problems, but he can't hear us. Sounds like we're on the river and a tugboat's coming by. Penalty moves it back to around the 12 yard line. <laughs> well, Matt Richardson in at uh, one of the quarterback positions. Uh, also, Des Abrams uh, replacing Rod McBeth. Hathaway takes that ball and going to give it to the tailback. White tripped up, knocked down about the 13 yard line. JR. 
J.R. Hayden, yeah, the senior tackle, all-state performer, had 100 tackles last year, came into the, tonight's game with 40 stops on the year. Only 5, 10, 200 pounds, but he is everywhere. He's everywhere. What, what was that? Uh, what, who shot J.R.? Well, that was a big question years ago. Who blocked J.R.? That may be a better question this year. Who can block him? Huh? <laughs> Second and 10 as they lose. Uh, they have no gain on that first down play from their own 13-yard line. This time they'll pitch it out, and White will try to get outside. Across the 15 he goes, about the 18 or 19-yard line off the option. So they pick up a little running run, but short of the first down as Lucas Jackson knocks him down. They'll place it on the 19-yard line, and there, LaGrange will have third down, about three yards to go. Mims Boyce with the hit on the quarterback just prior to the pitch, and Hathaway was a little bit upset about that. I want to remind you the... Rebel reunion number four gets underway this weekend for a homecoming. Calvert's Crossing Country Club is the site tomorrow night of the big party at 8 o'clock, honoring Mrs. Starlene Hill, Mrs. Mary McCoy, Ken Bates, Harold Thomas, and Bill Watson. Third down and three, and Hathaway in trouble. Did he fumble? No, they're going to rule an incomplete pass. Rebels were all over him as he tried to get out of there. That was <laughs> Lucas Jackson all over him. Glen Trail Ware also was there. That ball went bobbing out of there. They... They graciously ruled it an incomplete pass. Hathaway's lucky that that was an incompletion because West Monroe was all over him. But I'm not sure they would have scored a touchdown, Frank, because I think they, they fumbled the ball through the end zone themselves. Fourth down for the Gators. They should be punting as J.J. Johnson is back again. 8-16 to play. Rebels will be 6-0 after this football game. Ranked high in the national polls. Ranked number one in Louisiana from day one. They hope to make it wire to wire this year. Here's the snap. They'll punt it away. It's blocked. It's on the ground of the 20-yard line, and that ball is going to bounce back oh, over the Gator bench inside the 15. He is down to the 12-yard line where the Rebels will have the football. It looked like a boomerang. It did. <laughs> Who blocked that punt? I'm not sure that anybody blocked it. I thought it's it was a just a terrible kick. It oh. went off his foot. I assumed it was blocked. <laughs> well, yeah. we, we might say it's blocked just to kind of help him out, but... The, it looked to be a horrible kick. And then it went bouncing back like in the boomerang style that you talked about. So that's a tough break for the Gators. And the Rebels first down and 10 from the 12-yard line of LeGrand. Surely the wind didn't catch it and knock it back, huh? Pretty good win out there. <laughs> We're trying to help you, Jacob. Eight minutes left in this football game. The Rebels give it inside. Glintrell where? It's the tailback. It certainly is. And he just <laughs> got a yard or two to the nine-yard line. Glintrell where running from tailback. Wait a minute. What was that? And now the uh, the Rebel fans on their feet giving a round of applause to Glentrail. He's running at tailback. Second down, eight. They got two yards on that play. Glentrail, where is the tailback? Jade is the fullback. Balls at the nine-yard line of the Gators. Here's Mitch Tucker pitching out to Ware, sweeping left, hit at the 10, and... Out of bounds at the 10-yard line. No, he's still on his feet. Oh, they called I him out of bounds. I think they did right. rule him out of bounds about the 10, but he was <laughs> running hard. So he loses a yard on that play, and it's third down now from the 10-yard line. Dwight Butler ran him out of bounds at the 10. You know, Glentrell's an outstanding athlete. He plays linebackers, you all know, but he was a quarterback a couple of years ago when he played for Claiborne Christian before that uh, school closed down. He's getting a little action tonight. He's a, a bigger tailback for these Rebels than those other guys. Third down, about nine from the 10. They'll pitch it to where he'll sweep the right side this time. He Bumble. fumbles the ball. It's on the ground. Scramble for it, and the Gators have it, I believe. They run it with They're it. pick it up and return to the 15-20 and finally stop at the 24. Chris Walker picked it up and lumbers his way back to the Gator 24-yard line after Glentro Ware fumbled it away. So the Gators will have it at their own 24 with 7-10 remaining in this contest. And Frank, I think the experiment with Glen Trail Ware at tailback is now over. <laughs> I was about to say he gave a much better size back there at tailback at 6-2 at 2-10 compared to J.J. Johnson and Demario Taylor. First down and 10 yards to go for the Lagrange Gators, their own 24. Hathaway to pass, and it is caught out here, and a short gain out to about the 33-yard line by Roderick Antoine. Brought down by Dez Abrams for the Rebels. The gain will be about four. The clock will run with seven minutes to play. And now Dusty Bastion coming in for Jared Frost. 
Justin Folks playing one of the cornerback positions. Dusty and Justin were both on the Don Chow Show last night. Both these kids do great jobs on the special teams, and they're products of the program, Jim. They'll be seniors next year and ready to step into these positions. They certainly will. Luke Sanders, the freshman, number 38, in it linebacker. Second down, six yards to go now for Lagrange. Has the way back to pass, comes out of the pocket. Down run. Kay Sanders caught up with him and pulled him down to the 40, but Hathaway gives the Gators a first down and 10 at their own 40 with six and a half minutes left in the game as they trail West Monroe 37 to 12. Number 47, David Batson came through and he was blocked, a good block by Butler, and he applied some early pressure, but Hathaway able to get outside containment, pick up some good yardage. LaGrange will be 4-2 after tonight's game. Their previous... Previously, their only loss was to Lafayette. They lost that game in overtime by a single point. Hathaway back in the shotgun this time. Has the snap from his own 40. Big rush. He sprints right. Comes out of there. He's going to run the ball. He's up to the 45. And down there, he got five yards. And Hathaway is knocked down by Dusty Bastion again for the Rebels. Well, I think or maybe I got it backwards. <laughs> Dusty kind of got knocked down by Hathaway, but he got him to the ground. He stuck his head in there, and boy, he really... He really bounded backwards, uh, and they're going to help that young man off the field right now. Darren Smith had a chance to wrap up Hathaway. He was applying heavy pressure, but Hathaway with a nifty move able to elude the big man. Matt Henry replaces Dusty, and Matt's the other guy that was on the show last night, those three defensive backs. So second and five now for the Gators at their own 45-yard line with five and a half minutes to play in this football game, the homecoming game for the year 2000 at West Monroe High School. Hathaway, first down play, a second down play. Hit in the backfield as Case Sanders came shooting across there, made the hit on Chris White as he took the handoff of the draw play back around the 40. They lose five yards. The previous gain is lost. So it's back to the 40, third down and 10 yards to go. Nice play by Case. Good job by Case Sanders. As big Andrew Whitworth waves to the camera on the sidelines. Want to say hello to the cookie man. James Cook listens to all the ball games on the radio. A 1979 graduate of West Monroe High School. So one of the many alums enjoying this game tonight. Third down 10 on the shotgun Hathaway. Looks to throw the football. Steps up. Going to run the ball and pull down. He'll lose a couple to the 38-yard line. Darren Smith. Diving for him and making the tackle at the 38. It's fourth and 12. The Gators, I assume, will punt it with four and a half minutes to play in the contest. Also, want to send our condolences to the family of Don Logan. Don passed away uh, just the other day. I believe his funeral is going to be tomorrow afternoon. Just a, a great guy. Really. Certainly a fine man. I've known Don all my life. So, in punt formation now, the Gators. Low snap, rolls back there, but picked up, and Morgan gets the kick away, and it bounces to 35-30. J.J. is going to let it go, and it's dead inside the 20 at about the 19-yard line. So let's see if uh, the Glenswell where experimented tailback is over, and I believe it is. Chase Bostic is coming on, though, Jim. Looks as if Chase is going to be the quarterback for West Monroe this time. Well, I say that, he could be in at wide receiver. Here we go. Well, you're right, he's going to be the quarterback, Frank. Chase Bostic, down under at quarterback for the West Monroe Rebels. Takes that football, pitches out. It's going to be Demario Taylor, the 24-yard line. And Taylor goes down about the 24, gains five on that little toss sweep to the left side, and a flag is down on the play. Flag, flag down on the tackle that time. Jamal Shelton may be the guilty party. Andrew Whitworth. In a little scuffle there. Well, they're trying to figure out what's going on here. First down for the Rebels. The football is 
They've had two, gonna, two players ejected, Frank. Andrew Whitworth has been ejected for West Monroe and Jamal Shelton for LaGrange. Well, the... Uh, it's going to be all I'm trying to figure this thing out, Jim. I'm sorry. I'm also trying to work with our equipment here and having difficulty getting the radio set, but... Now they're going to stop playing and explain things to Coach Shows. I'm glad to see they're going to explain it because I don't know what's going on. The ball is placed right now on the 25. They show second and four for the Rebels at their own 25. Well, Frank, here's what happened. There was a six-yard run by DeMario Taylor. After the run was over, Jamal Shelton and Andrew Whitworth got into a scuffle, and those two guys were ejected. Personal fouls were called on each one, and uh, that's important because uh, Andrew Whitworth can't afford another ejection or he's... Uh, What's that? Is he gone for the year? Well, now, did they throw another flag? Unsportsmanlike conduct, maybe against uh, Coach Childs. They or maybe they, on the bench. They indicated an unsportsmanlike conduct call. We don't know what it was. And, of course, we Bill's out of commission right now because their microphone on the sideline is not working. So Let's we, see. Uh, Bill, can you hear us? I guess not. I think he may hear us, but I, we, unfortunately we can't hear him. So the penalty moved the ball back to the 12-yard line of the Rebels, and it'll be West Monroe's ball there after that unsportsmanlike conduct call. Second down, about 18 yards to go for the Rebels at their own 12 now. Only two and a half minutes left in the game, and the Rebels ahead, 37-12. to 12. Here's uh, Chase Bostic, quarterback, taking the ball and giving it inside to the running back. Breaks Banks. the tackle, 20, Banks, 25, 30, 35, 40, out of bounds and down the sideline. And about the 42-yard line is Mark Banks. But, Jim, another fine run by Banks, and he almost broke it all the way that time. Another penalty flag was thrown well after that play was over. Unsportsmanlike call is going to be against Chase Bostic, the quarterback. Yeah, they're going to call back what was a terrific run by... Mark Banks, and you just kind of hate to see things ending up here like this now. Well, it should be 15 yards from the end of the run because that was a dead ball foul, so that's what it's going to be, and it will not quite be a first down, but it'll be a third down and short. And they'll take it to where Banks ran with the ball to about the 45, and then a 15-yard penalty moves it back to the 27 of the Rebels, and they'll put it down there. So the Rebels have it there. Two minutes, 21 seconds left in this football game. West Monroe from its own 27 now has third down about three. And Chase Bostic, 5'10", 175-pound senior, started defensive There's back tonight in the There's game. Another and now flag. another flag has been thrown. Yet another flag went down, and now the referee steps forward. Let's see what this call is going to be. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Again. And now they're going to say it's against West Monroe, and it may be. It may be that they're out of the coaching box area. I'm not real sure. It's unfortunate that we can't go down to Bill because he's right there in the midst of everything. Right. But really, folks, uh, the game's just kind of <coughs> getting out of hand from the standpoint of penalties being called on West Monroe, the players and the coaches, uh, they're really beginning to lose their composure. They're obviously upset with a lot of the calls that have been made, and uh, losing their composure has not helped them much. Another penalty back to the 13-yard line of the Rebels, another unsportsmanlike conduct call, so actually that ended up being 30 yards in penalties that time. Banks had got the thing to the 45, but they're back to the 13-yard line. Two minutes and 13 seconds left in the game. Dade and Demario Taylor, the running backs now behind the quarterback, who is Chase Bostic. Now Bostic backs off. It looks as if the Rebels are going to huddle. Well, Don Charles might. He's leaving the field, Frank. Don Charles is leaving the field, and they went over to talk to Coach Arledge because I think he's going to be leading the team now. They're taking Don Charles off the field. So evidently, Coach Charles has been ejected from the game. We'll be having Coach Giles on our post-game show, of course. We'll have a chance to talk about some of this. When you get ejected from the game, can you come back for the post-game? I think so. Okay. At least the Don Giles show. Well, certainly. 
Yeah, here's Bostic getting inside. Nothing there for the Rebels. They're going to be stopped at the, at the last 14 minute. yard line. So nothing there on the running play inside. Chris Walker makes the tackle. Fourth down. Two minutes to play. It's all pretty academic. The Rebels with this big 37 to 12 lead. Just hate to see it in like that. Let's see if the Rebels will punt it. I assume they will with the football at their own 13 yard line. Remember. Michael Peterson, the deep snapper, is still injured. Rick Gio still handling the uh, deep snap right now. Mims Boys is standing on the goal line to wait this. And half of the players snap. for Westboro not in the game. They're going to have to call timeout. They call for timeout. We're going to pause. We'll be back. It's 37 to 12. The Rebels, this is Westboro football. Hi, everybody. I'm Mims Boys and punt formation for the Rebels. High snap, but he controls it, and he gets the kick away. Nice high punt by Mims. Ball going to bounce at the 45. Great bounce across midfield, across the 45 to the 40, to the 35, all the way down to the 34-yard line of LaGrange. A great punt by Mims Boyce with a good roll that time, a 52-yard punt by the Rebel punter. LaGrange will take the ball with a minute 20 left in the game, trailing 37 to 12. That's the yardage on the punt. I was going to give it to you, but I can't read that. <laughs> I got it from a man on this side, 52 <laughs> yards. Don't give our stat guy a hard time, man. I'm just playing with He him. does a great job. Here we go as Lagrange goes from the 34-yard line. As long as he can read his numbers. Then right. It doesn't matter, does doesn't it? It doesn't matter. Lagrange going to pitch it out. Right, a little halfback pass. They go back the other way. Complete out to the 40-yard line and down across the 45 of the 46-yard line is going to be the quarterback Hathaway. He pitched out that he was the receiver on the pass the other way. Des Abrams made the tackle for the Rebels. They do gain about 13 yards on that play and have a first down at their own 47-yard line. And Frank, I believe number five, Frankie Lyons, was supposed to be in the ball game. He wasn't. And after the ball was snapped, Jared Frost came running off the Rebel sideline and trying to get uh, involved in that play. And now Frankie Lyons is in, is on the field, and uh, Jared came out. Now Jared's running back out there again at the last minute. First down and 10 from the 47. They'll go to the fullback. He's knocked down after gaining a couple of yards to the 49-yard line. We're in the last minute of play. The freshman linebacker, Luke Sanders, number 38, makes the tackle for West Monroe. West Monroe next week travels down to the Gulf of Mexico, or near it anyway, to take on Moss Point, Moss Point, Mississippi, the number one ranked team in the state of Mississippi, and it should be a dandy. Moss Point beat Evangel earlier this year, and they've beaten a bunch of other people as well. <laughs> Dawn Childs is asking if she needs to come up and do the postgame show since her <laughs> husband's uh, been given an early exit. Hathaway rolling left, going to scramble the ball, steps up, still running. He's at midfield. Hathaway the 45. He's at the 40. Pull down at the 38-yard line by Desiree Abrams for the Rebels. I tell you what, Hathaway's pretty elusive. He's yeah. a nice runner. Six seconds left in this football game. Let's see if they run it out or if they'll try this one more play and head back to Lake Charles. That should do That's it. That's going to do it. The clock will run down on the Rebels. Victorious over the LaGrange Gators in the 2000 homecoming game. Yeah, got a little out of array at the end, but West Monroe with the most impressive win once again. Dominating from start to finish and running its record to 6-0 in this 2000 football season. So the teams meet at the center of the field to congratulate each other. We'll pause and return. We invite you to stay tuned to the Don Shows show. I assume Coach Shows will be here with us. We've got Don Shows up here. If he's not here, we have Mrs. Shows, the ought, better half of this deal. It ought to be an interesting uh, post-game show, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be back. The final score at Rebel Stadium, West Monroe 37, LaGrange 12. You're listening to West Monroe Football. 